There is a reason that camera bags are often designed to fit a 70 to 200 mm lens. This is perhaps the quintessential photographer's lens. So today we're going to give you five reasons why you need a 70 to 200 mm and perhaps this is all the lens you ever need by shooting a bit of fritzy ball. I'm out shooting with full-time professional photo taker Matt Usher, photographing 22 part-time footballers kick a ball about. I'm photographing the Kings Lynn, what are they called? Kings Lynn Town. Kings Lynn. <laughs> I thought they were going to be like Kings Lynn Rangers or something, no, something okay. exciting. Kings United. Okay, King, Kings Lynn United. Kings Lynn Town. Kings Lynn Town. <laughs> we don't even know what the football team's called. It's Kings Lynn Town. Kings Lynn Town, not quite Premier League stuff. Far from it, in fact. In fact, I reckon some of their star players probably work in JJB Sports in the daytime. Anyway, let's kick start. Kick start, did you get it? Yeah, go away. Anyway, here's the five reasons why you need a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Well, reason number one, it's a workhorse of a lens. Just check that out. I'm getting pissed on quite literally. I think there's some people right out there pissing on me. Absolutely soaked. A workhorse lens used by working photo people, humans everywhere. It is perhaps one of the most solid, reliable, most robust lenses you can have. As seen here, taking a lashing from the Lord, having a slash on us all. I mean, just look at this lens. It's as solid as a rock. I mean, I've got no worries about using this lens out here in the pissing rain. In fact, I've put the 70 to 200 through a lot more than just this. There was the time we tested out the weatherproofing of a 70 to 200 lens by subjecting it to a light shower and then a little bit of heat. 70 200s, pretty solid lenses, aren't they? They're built to last, they're like tanks. I've dropped mine quite a few times, just took it, to be fair. To be fair. Pros drop stuff too. I wouldn't know what that's like though, never dropped a lens or camera before. Oh. See, I, I told you those lenses were tough. Damn it. Why they put a UV filter on these things. I just use lens caps but I'm not using them, I just... Yeah, makes sense. I've hardly ever, I've hardly ever damaged the front element. Oh, they're yeah. pretty tough. They are pretty tough. Yeah. I'm gonna take take this shit off. Well, apart from Nikon's one, which is like... I wish it was like a, a couple of inches bigger. <laughs> I mean, the 7200 is uber rugged, uber masculine, which is why Canon painted theirs white of course but just because it's a hard ass it doesn't mean its ass isn't flexible not in the same way as this person's ass but one of the useful things about the 70 to 200 is that it has a useful set of focal lengths 70 to 200 kind of just slightly longer than standard and 200 quite useful telly well 70 to 200 is pretty good for indoor sports yeah, it's very good, yeah. Excellent. Right there, when obviously when those coming towards as close as you can zoom out, you've got that extra space to work with. Especially as a 70, I mean, even in a re reasonably tight situation. You su you're surprised how much you can get into a 70. Yeah. It's actually quite... I mean, it's, it's not too much longer than a 50, is it? No. So... No. With those focal lengths, you can use it anywhere. You can use it for outdoor sports too. You just have to set up at one specific spot and wait for the action to happen there. So with the 70 to 200, it's a really versatile lens and it's not just used for sports. You can use it for portraits as well. Even landscapes, to some extent. Yeah, I've, I've, I use mine for landscapes. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of pictures I've done on the 70 to 200. Yeah. So it's not just about wide angle stuff, you know. Sometimes oh, it's yeah. Just to fit it out. I've used the good old 70 to 200 in a number of situations to shoot cityscapes, monkeys scratching their ass and sniffing it, portraits. There are lots of action going on down this end, isn't there? The grass is growing. Yeah, it's got it's nice. Lovely, Kept it nice. Lovely 70 to 200 shot of the grass. Yeah. Fantastic. The action on the pitch might not be Premier League stuff, but the 70 to 200 isn't low league stuff when it comes to action. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to fast, fast focusing lenses, I guess the 7200 is pretty good, isn't it? 
I'd put it up there, definitely. Yeah. I've recommended that you get lenses like the 50 or 85 mm before, but they aren't always fast focusing lenses. Oh. The 70 to 200 does tend to be a quick focusing lens. When you're pairing up a DSLR for fast focusing, high FPS stuff, you need a lens that can keep up. The 70 to 200 is it. It's not just about how the lens handles the action, but also how the lens handles with your hands. The 7200 physically is a pretty good size and weight. I mean, for hand holding, when you get any kind of bigger than this, it's a bit. Well, why don't you go over there? And I'll just, I'll just stand here. I'm not lugging this all the way down there. In terms of weight and balance, it is at a sweet spot where the lens is not too heavy as to make it too front heavy. IS as well. Yes, it's a, it's a winning combination with the VR. It really is. Yeah. So VR on Nikon, obviously. Combine that 7200 with the 2.8 aperture as well. Yeah. It's, it's just a great combination. Useful. With the vibration reduction or image stabilization, it's easy to get a very decent handheld shot, and you won't have the shakes when shooting video. Although her dancing does make it look like she has the start of Parkinson's. If you decide to save some money, i.e. cheap out and go for the cheaper F4 version, then the weight is even lower at less than 800 grams. But look, if my wimpy arms can hold an f2.8 for 90 minutes, with a 15 minute break in between, anyone with regular arms is going to be able to hold it for at least 5 minutes more. Anyway, last point. And the fifth reason for getting a 7200 is the image quality. I mean, the 7200s from Canon, Nikon, and the other one, and the third party ones, tend to be pretty good. <coughs> 7200 is such a sharp lens, it really. I mean, I'm shooting on 3200 at the moment. Yeah. At 2.8, like they're really, they're, you know, very crisp. Zoom yes. lenses often get written off for of being are. a compromise in image quality, not with the 70 to 200s. These are some of the sharpest lenses in the range. Oh. Shooting primes doesn't actually give you that much advantage over 70 to 200 mm in terms of image quality, other than a faster max aperture, but with the mental high ISO performance you get these days, the only benefit of that is if you're a bokeh bitch. The Canon 70-200mm f2.8 LIS2 USM, apart from having a stupidly long name, is one of my favourite lenses ever. The image quality doesn't decrease throughout the range, and it comes in a white colour, which makes it look so pro, innit? Nikon's one isn't so bad either, but you don't care about Nikon, do you? If you want to cover all of those focal lengths, you could do a lot worse than to go for a lovely 70 to 200 mm lens. It is the Swiss army knives of lenses. Whether for work or play, this rock solid bit of glass is probably the most reliable, useful lens to have in your kit bag.